Superman. Let's see how things went at Tartan International Raceway in the Super Series. Just west of Krugersdorp in Gauteng lies Tarleton International Raceway, a facility that caters for both drag racing and stadium off-road, at the scene of round four of Super Series 98. After a long break, since the end of May, drivers, riders and pit crews were ready for action. In the clubman's motorcycle category, Kawasaki rider Clayton Duckworth had a lead of 21 points over Leonard Hall after three rounds, but second position in the championship battle was by no means settled. The layout of the off-road circuit at Tarleton International had been changed before round four in order to give it a better flow, and the competitors in the clubman's category were the first to get a taste of the new track in racing conditions. With the surface having been wetted to cut down the dust, the slippery conditions were bound to catch out somebody early in the race. No surprise then when Bruce van Amava found his Honda slipping out from underneath him while in an early second position. This had a domino effect further down the field when some of the back markers suddenly found themselves facing an obstruction difficult to get around. Van Amava eventually rejoined stone last. Meanwhile, at the front of the field, a nice three-way battle had developed between Yaku Dutoy on his Kawasaki, Malcolm Furness on a Honda, and Mario Foster on another Honda. The clubman's category had been brought into Super Series at the beginning of the season in order to give some of the less experienced riders and weekend racers the opportunity to hone their skills and to get experience of racing under really competitive conditions. It's been working extremely well, with some of the largest fields contesting the clubman's category. The slippery conditions also caught out Dutoy, who'd lost his lead to Furness and was trying to get a good drive out of the right-hander. That gave Furness and Foster the opportunity to pull away. Up into third position now was Honda rider Wade Miller, but that didn't last long as Leonard Hall on another Honda moved past just before getting into the stadium section. Furness was exactly where he wanted to be. Before this round, he was lying third on the points table, and with points leader Clayton Duckworth not anywhere to be seen, he was ideally placed to close the gap. Typical of clubman's racing, some fascinating battles were going on further down the field, and Hall was leading a four-way battle for third, ahead of Miller, Grand Wheeler on a KGM, and Paul Richardson on his Kawasaki. was second on the points table, just one ahead of Malcolm Furness before this round, so he was keen to shake off his pursuers and catch up with the leading pair. Five laps into the race and things had changed at the front of the field. Mario Foster had taken the lead and was starting to pull away from Furness, who had Leonard Hall breathing down his neck. Foster was gradually pulling away from the rest of the field in a great display of riding skills. He'd not scored any points in the three rounds so far this season, so it was comfortably his best performance. The battle for third was far from resolved, however, as Hall was still battling to get away from Wheeler and Richardson. As the race drew to a close, Wheeler kept on attacking Hall for third position, but in the final corner before entering the stadium section, a fallen rider forced them to take different lines and Wheeler put his KTM down. This incident dropped him down the field and he'd finished tenth. No such problems for Foster, though, who took his first victory of the year, seven seconds ahead of Malcolm Furness. Bruce Van Amava recovered well from his early form to finish fourth. I got my injury in Zimbabwe. When we went racing for the summer series, we got invited to Zimbabwe, and I broke my femur, and I just got back from the injury from my femur, and this was my first race I won this year from the Super Series. The Super Quad category has been dominated this year by the battle between Evan Hutchison and Clayton Duplessis. After three rounds, Hutchison's lead was by no means safe. Uh, the change is a difficult track. It's, a lot, uh, it's very technical, you know. Um, it's, it's not too fast, it's very tight and the experienced riders are going to win. No surprises at the start of the first race of the day, as Duplessis and Hutchison both got a good start off the line. Duplessis on his Linex Yamaha taking the lead from Hutchison on the Team Linex Royal Purple Machine. 
third was Graham Love on his Team Joburg Yamaha Answer Racing Blaster. All of the riders in this category are on standard Yamaha 200cc blasters, so the only factors making the difference in racing are the setup and racing skills of the riders. With Duplessis in the lead, Hutchison was trying his level best to put as much early pressure on his opponent as possible, hoping to force a mistake. But Duplessis was keeping a cool head as he brushed off every attack. Both of them needed to be aware of Love in third, though, as he was waiting for the two riders in front of him to take each other out. With the track drying out, the only man with a clear view was the leader, Clayton Duplessis, while the riders behind him had to contend with the dust kicked up by the leaders. Clint Buckham was in fourth, ahead of Brendan Bartenhorst. Hutchison wasn't enjoying lying in second position. He'd already won all three of the previous rounds overall and wasn't about to blot his copybook. Duplessis, on the other hand, was determined to stay ahead of the points leader. With the machine so equal in performance, one needs to work out your opponent's weak points and plan your overtaking. And the leading trio of Duplessis, Hutchison and Love were pulling away from the rest of the field in the process. Hutchison got it right and passed Duplessis coming into the main straight. This was great racing, illustrating the high standard into which quad racing in South Africa has developed over the past few years. This has resulted in its pioneer, Vickers van Dierventer, reaching international acclaim for his long-distance exploits, such as in the Paris Dakar and the Atlas Savan. Duplessis closed in on Hutchison on the tighter bits of the circuit, with Love hanging on grimly in third. There was nothing to choose between the trio, demonstrating why they were the top three contenders for the title this year. Brendan Bardenhorst was in fourth, now ahead of Clint Buckham. The inevitable mistake came when Graham Love went wide, losing contact with the two leaders in the process. Seven laps into the race with one to go and Hutchison had been gradually pulling away from Duplessis. Fitness plays an important part in this business and Hutchison was one of the fittest of the lot. Watching Hutchison and Duplessis in action is a pleasure. Their control and balance an example to aspiring young riders. Further back, a huge battle for fifth was raging between Buckham and Gianni Giano Caro, with the two regularly swapping places as the race drew to a close. But on the final lap, Duplessis had suddenly closed in on Hutchison in the lead and was trying to position himself for a last corner overtaking maneuver. But the points leader got the best grip out of the penultimate corner and only needed to hold his line. <laughs> A close finish, and Hutchison couldn't relax for a moment. The top four remained in the same order, but Gianno Caro eventually triumphed over Buckham, with Glenn Julian and Ricky Gianno Caro completing the top eight. Um, the track is very rough already. The cars have really torn it up, so it's very, very physical out there. It's difficult to stay ahead of him. I could feel him behind me the whole way. I was just kept to my own line. And I knew it, he'd have to come past me, so uh, it seemed to work out. Yeah, we got a first. Back to the two weeks.